little quick video here on the Harbor Freight Sawmill. I know you've seen the uh, price differences in them and you're probably wondering if it's worth it. We're gonna go over my experiences with it. If you want a professional mill, if you plan on doing loads of lumber, it ain't the mill for you. If you're doing little projects at home, like me doing benches and just doing this little cabin and stuff like that, for the price, it'll definitely do what you want it to do. We'll go over everything, but they do work. All right. This is the sawmill. One of the important things I learned on these, as you can see, build a platform for it. Originally, when I set this up, it was just, I had flattened out the ground really well. And I leveled it up and it was okay, but it, it settled pretty quickly and became a nightmare because as you're cutting along, it had a hump in it. And I was getting like a quarter inch hump into my uh, boards that I was cutting, which when you get to the planing stage, yeah, it's a problem. I actually really, really simple to operate. They uh, crank here, you adjust your height once you get it there. These two, these two clamps, clamp it down, turn it on, switch it over to start, one pull. The thing starts right up pretty much every time. That little Predator engine seems to be a pretty good engine. They, uh, your water container, what's nice too is it has that gas shut off. So if you're not going to use it for a while, just shut that off and let it run out so you're not leaving that crap in your lines. They, uh, but overall, it's done really well. The uh, that handles. That handles loose is because a lot of times I use it to cut legs on benches to get them even. You turn it upside down and just run across the legs. Sometimes I have to take that off real quick. The uh, This thing is heavy when you assemble it it's going to take a couple of people to get it up onto that track another place i screwed up i was in a hurry and, and tried to get it on myself and i bent it so now i have to push from the other side this handle on this side is your blade adjustment you turn that to tighten and loosen the blade the blades themselves are super super easy to uh get on and off yes my hands are too cold to do that right now but we're gonna run we'll run this log through it so you can see how they cut I've cut a lot of oak with this thing and several pine trees it it surprisingly goes through the oak really well they uh the blades last a decent amount of time. You use the same blades as you would a wood miser or anybody else. I think Linux blades, I get mine off of eBay. They, uh, they're not too bad. I think it was about $25 a blade. They, uh, pretty decent little mill. If you used a uh, Alaskan mill or a beam cutter, which I do still use because sometimes these logs are so heavy i'll use the the alaskan mill or the beam cutter to actually cut the log in half because you you don't use the center of the log anyway that piece is whatever you do with it it's going to split so uh what i'll do is use the uh, saw alaskan sawmill or the beam cutter to actually cut the log in half and then load it on here but uh like i said i mean for the price it, it it works really well, but like I said, if, if you're gonna, if you think you're gonna buy one of these and start your little lumber business, you, no. It's actually a lot of work to get some boards out of these things. And then, and then they're not, I mean, they're not a perfect cut, so it does take some planing, but for rough stuff, and like I said, for home projects, it works pretty well.
I noticed on that crank, it's four full turns is about an inch. But I always just get down and measure it with a tape measure to be sure. The other drawback to this mill is working with this big old heavy log is not a big deal. But smaller stuff, it's only got one tie down, which I think the thing's about froze down right now. Uh, that screws in and holds that log there. The problem is, it doesn't hold real well. When you're working with smaller stuff, when that blade, especially a sharp blade, when it hits, it will knock the crap out of that thing. I had it slam into the guide there on the side. Had a smaller piece that I thought it was tied down. As soon as that blade hit it, it slammed it in and that guide bound it up. I had to stop and readjust those guides. And you just gotta be careful with that. They, uh, there's no way to really strap it either because you can't put anything over the tracks. It's just one of those things. There's a way to do it, but it's not exactly a safe thing to do. So I'm not gonna show it on video, but you'll figure it out. I mean, it's not that dangerous, but they, uh, you, you'll figure it out as you go. But I mean, for the stuff that I'm doing, this thing works great and I'm, I'm very happy with it. Like I said, my only, most of the, my complaints that I have were issues that were my fault. So you'll be happy. I mean, like I said, it, it's not a professional rig. Don't expect it to be. This is an issue that you will have. The water spout comes out over there. As you can see your track right here, that wet sawdust builds up. If you don't keep this clean, what's gonna happen is you're gonna be a quarter inch off on one side. And as you can see how much is in that right now. That's gonna throw your whole cut off. So, I just keep a screwdriver and I hold it like this. When I push the mill back, it usually cleans it out. Like I said, I, it's really bad right now because I didn't pay attention. So don't be like me, pay attention. So.
That's some pretty stuff right there. Very pretty stuff. Very heavy. <laughs> 